What's going on guys? John Holder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to start to learn about linear regression models with Scikit-Learn, Pandas, and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at linear regression models. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership, fill my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to get into linear regression models. And linear regression models allow us to predict the future, basically. Sort of. Kind of. Basically make predictions based on past data. And up until now, we've been learning just the basics of pandas, data frames, numpy, basic charts and graphs. Now we're going to take all that stuff and sort of wrap it into scikit-learn and use scikit-learn to start doing actual predictive things, which should be pretty cool. Now, scikit-learn is a popular machine learning library for Python, so that's what we're gonna be using. We'll look at that in just a minute. In this video, I wanna spend just a couple of minutes talking about what linear regression is, what are some of the key parts of it that you need to understand before we get into it, and what exactly we're trying to do with it. And we'll also take a look at scikit-learn in the next few videos, we're going to be using a diabetes data set that comes with scikit-learn, sort of a test data set. And we're going to be using that to run our linear regression models and learn all the cool stuff about this. So we'll also start to look at that in this video. So first things first, what is a linear regression model? What is this all about? Well, there's lots of ways to describe it. I think the easiest way is just to head over to Wikipedia and look up linear regression and give this a read. I'm not going to go through it in this video, but basically the gist of it is if we come down here, what we're trying to do is let me click on this graph here. You'll notice this is a scatter plot. And we've looked at scatter plots already with our in our pandas playlist here. Basically, we're taking independent variables, sometimes called features. These are these dots, and then running a best fit line right through them and using that line to sort of predict in the future. So imagine if these are men of a certain height, right? And all of these different dots are different heights. Right? And as we go up, the heights get larger. What if we wanted to predict if one of those men had a child, how tall would that child be? Well, we could do that with this, right? So we would understand that, you know, up here where the height is higher, they're going to be somewhere around here. They might be up here, they might be down here, but they're going to be in this sort of range. And we can make predictions based on that. And the distance between each of these dots and the red line is sort of what we're trying to find. And we can use that doing all kinds of math behind the scenes to make predictions into the future. So it's really kind of that simple. If you've got a guy that's not that tall down here, his child is going to be, you know, sort of in this range of not that tall. And we can make predictions on that. And you can do this with all sorts of things. We're going to be using, like I said, a set of diabetes database. And it has things like age, sex, uh, BMI, body weight, blood pressure, all that sort of stuff. So we're going to take those things, for instance, age. As you get older, what's your progression of diabetes probability. Like we'll be able to test these things. And that's basically what linear regression does, which is really, really cool. And it might sort of seem like common sense, but this is a way to set math to it and find sort of exactly not just common sense where, oh, if they're taller, yeah, they're going to have taller kids. Yeah, common sense. But we're going to be able to quantify that using mathematical models and predict the future based on that. So really, really cool. And I should say in machine learning, there are tons of different models to make predictions. Linear regression model is sort of the first one you learn. It's kind of the easiest one, uh, but it's still very interesting. And there's lots of moving parts. And it takes a minute to wrap your brain around some of these things. So like I said, we're going to be using scikit-learn. If you want to head over here and just go to Google and type in scikit-learn, something like that. You go to the web page, scikit-learn, machine learning in Python. Very cool website. Check all this out. And you can see right here at the top, we've got our regression model examples linear regression, regression, same thing. And uh, you can click on this and, and read all about the linear models. There's more than one regression model, but we're going to be sticking with basic linear regression. Very, very cool. So if you want to get started, you can click get started or just come here and to install. We need to install this and we could just pip install scikit dash learn. So before we get into this, I'm just going to do this very quickly. Head over to our terminal. I'm going to control C to break out of here because we had our Jupyter notebook running. And you'll remember I'm in my C, my data directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on. And let's just pip install scikit-learn. And that will go through and do all the things. And scikit-learn comes with all kinds of stuff. It also comes with dummy data sets that we can use. For instance, the diabetes data set that we're going to use. And we can come back here and see that's pretty much all we needed to do. scikit-learn. 
and we're good to go. So now I'm going to run my Jupyter notebook again. All right, there we go. Uh, try restarting it. So I've got a Jupyter notebook. I'm calling it LinReg, short for linear regression, I guess. We're importing pandas as PD as always, NumPy as MP as, as always. And now we're gonna, from scikit-learn.datasets, we're gonna import the load underscore diabetes data set, right? So let's just start to set this up. Let's very quickly here, load our diabetes data set. So we can do that. Let's create a variable called diabetes, call it whatever you want really. And here we just load underscore diabetes. Now, if you had your own data you were importing, you could go back to the beginning of this playlist and watch the videos on how to import from a, like a CSV file or whatever. We're just gonna pull this right out of scikit-learn because this is the test data set, so we could do it like that. If we wanted to, we could print diabetes, and this is just gonna give us a whole bunch of crazy stuff that you know makes no sense whatsoever. So what we need to do is convert the data to a pandas data frame. We know how to do this. We've done this a lot. So let's call this my underscore DF as we always do. And this is just going to be a PD dot data frame. And we want to pass in that diabetes dot data. And we can also designate the columns. Now I happen to know what columns we want. Uh, you obviously wouldn't if you were just doing this the first time. But if you were using your own data, you would know what the columns were that you wanted to play with. So our columns are going to be diabetes dot feature names. All right, so that looks good. Now let's just run this real quick and let's go my underscore DF just to see what this looks like. And you can see we've got age, sex, BMI, BP, which I think stands for blood pressure and a bunch of S's, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, and S6. And I can't remember offhand what all of these are. It's certain blood serum levels and things like that. We're not gonna deal with all of these because you know, we only need to deal with a few of these to wrap our brains around how to create a linear regression model. So I think we'll just stick with the basic ones of age, sex, BMI, and blood pressure, right? So, okay, we also need sort of the target thing, right? The thing we want to predict. So in this data set, the whole point of this thing is to predict the progression of diabetes one year later, right? So we can get that target from the data set. It's already in there. They've already got that data in there. And this is important because it's going to allow us to sort of check our results. Like we know what age does over time in one year because we have that data. So we're going to try and predict it and see if it matches up to what it actually was. And we're actually going to use what it actually was in the prediction. It, we'll get into it. It might seem complicated when I'm babbling about it right now, but this all makes sense as we go forward. So let's add the target to our data frame here. So we know how to add things to a data frame. We've learned how to do that. We call my underscore DF. And then let's create a column called target. And that's just going to equal our diabetes dot target. And again, this just comes in the data set, right? And oh, I misspelled diabetes, diabetes. There we go. Now we can print out our data frame. So my underscore DF. And now we've got age, sex, BMI, BP, all the S's. But also if we scroll over, we now have our target. And the target range is 25 to 346, right? So 25 is the low, 346 is the high. So we can look through here. Here's a target of 151. That's kind of right in the middle. 75, that's pretty low. And we have different targets, right? Now we can also grab the, just the head. So we're kind of overwhelmed right here with all of this data. Uh, let's instead, let's just grab the head which is the first five rows, right? So we could call my underscore DF dot head. We've looked at this in past videos and that's sort of a little bit easier to read. So zero, one, two, three, four, because right now we don't really care what all this information is. We're just getting it ready to do this stuff. And it's nice to kind of glance at it to see, does it make sense? We've got a column for age, sex, BMI, BP, et cetera. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, like I said earlier, these column heads are our independent variables. Sometimes they're called features, same thing, right? So those are the things we're gonna be testing based on the target, right? So we're gonna say, hey, what is the age of a person? How does that affect the target? Which again is diabetes progression one year later, right? So after a year, what is age? Do people have more diabetes or less diabetes the older they get? Uh, you know, do more males or females a year later have more diabetes? Do, you know, people with a higher BMI body mass index level, you know, larger people, do they have more diabetes or less diabetes a year from now? So we'll be able to 
make predictions and then see how close our predictions were based on the target getting ahead of ourselves here. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, just to sort of give you a very brief overview of what linear regression is, what we use it for to make predictions in the future. It's a mathematical model. Uh, we don't really care about the equations and stuff. You can really get into the weeds with this stuff. When I went to college, uh, I studied economics and I took a lot of statistics courses. We had to do all of this by hand. You know, it was so long ago, we didn't even have scikit-learn back then. We had to use an actual calculator and punch in all these numbers in the equations. So I had to learn all the equations and stuff. I've long since forgot the equations. I'd have to brush up on them. But I think it's just the slope of a line, mx plus y or whatever it is. But uh, if you want to learn all about that stuff, like I said, head over to that Wikipedia page and just read all there is to it. Uh, go back here, just read all of this, and you'll get a really good overview. But you know, the broad strokes of it is, like I said earlier, we're just taking our data, creating a scatter plot. The linear regression model creates this line, this best fit line that sort of gets right through the average of all of these. And you can see this data is very tightly packed, right? It, these things are all pretty close to this line. So you can kind of visualize, even if this line wasn't here, you could kind of see, oh, it's all sort of sloping up that way, right? It makes sense that way. A lot of times your data is just scattered everywhere and it doesn't really, it's not very obvious where the line should go. In those cases, your data is likely not going to be that predictive, right? This only works if there's an obvious sort of correlation going on here, right? We can sort of see, imagine if these were heights of men, the taller they are, you can guess if this line kept going into the future up here, you know, a person that's seven foot tall is going to likely have a tall child, right? That makes sense. And you can sort of see that just by visualizing this data. But of course, the point of linear regression models is to get exact numbers, like actually do the math to see, okay, what range of a child does a seven foot man expect to have when we can calculate that. So very cool, very fun. In the next three or four videos, we're going to really dive into this. And this is not as hard as you might think. It's kind of overwhelming at first. There's a lot of weird terms like training data and testing data and things like that. We'll get into all of it. It's actually pretty simple once you break it down. And hopefully I can break it down for you and make it just as easy as to understand as possible because this is great fun. And uh, I hope you think so too. And we'll find out pretty soon, I guess. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeb.com where you could use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos in the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeb.com and I'll see you in the next video.